the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. guest is on a mission to create something new to inspire the masses. After following his dreams to Portland, Oregon for Nike, he's on a new path with music in his future. Please welcome local artist, John Jerry. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with John Jerry. What's going on, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, man. I'm well. I'm well. How are you? Man, I'm excited. We, we've connected before in some community things, so I'm really excited to kind of hear your story. Uh, before we get hear your path, uh, go ahead and introduce the world. Who is John Jury? Uh, yeah, man, that's a, that's, a funny, that's a funny question. I've never... It's funny when you say it like that. Um, <laughs> I feel so important. Um, dude, you know, I'm, I, I'm just like... Uh, like everyone else, man. Like I, I'm, I have, <clears throat> let's see, my mom's from um, Mexico. My dad is from the South. I'm a biracial kid. I grew up in a biracial family. Um, grew up in Southern California in the Inland Empire. Uh, and yeah, I'm a Cali boy to, to my bones, but i um, been living in Portland, Oregon for, for quite some time. Um, and I, like everyone else, man, just trying to take, take life a day at a time and find our way and in, in search of, uh, you know, happiness and purpose and, you know, doing the things that fulfill me, um, fulfill my, my family, my wife and I, um, yeah, dude, I, I think that, um, I'm trying to think what else, I mean, I, let's say I'll start with this and I'll talk a lot about this today is my, a lot of my life, man, has really been rooted in basketball, um, or music. Those are the two passions in my life. And I'm, think every step of my journey I've made a decision rooted in basketball or music so um feel really grateful that those are two things that uh I fell in love with at a young age that have allowed me to turn into uh a profession turn into hobbies turn into passions and and things that not generate not just generate income but also um allow me to do the things that just make me excited every day to wake up you know what I mean and I think that's that's what we're all searching for so um yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. I love it. In fact, let's let's t- let's talk a little bit about that passion and and what you're kind of doing. So you're currently at Nike, but let's talk about what brought you up to Oregon. What actually brought you up mm-hmm. to the Northwest? Um, so actually, I've wanted to work at Nike since I was 12. Man, I had a opportunity to um, come to a basketball camp actually out here when I was young. My uncle used to do some camps, uh, some pretty major size camps. There was maybe hundred kids, hundred plus kids. They have the blazers come to the camp, speak to the camp, do workouts, all of that good stuff. And, um, I was really competitive, you know, like most people, I wanted to play in the NBA, uh, despite being five, eight and knowing I was as high, <laughs> tall as I was going to get. Um, but you know, I, I feel really blessed and thankful that I was exposed to coming to Oregon at that young of an age, because when I came, my uncle took us to the headquarters, uh, the Nike headquarters after the camp, just my family, myself, my brother, we're walking around and I'm just like blown away, man. I'm seeing people running. I'm seeing people hooping at the gym. And I'm like, yo, folks are working right right now. Like this is work. I know what my parents do. Like my dad was, you know, skilled engineer, but like driving two hours into the city to, to work in these manufacturing like companies. And, um, my mom was mostly doing, uh, you know, she was, a she did a lot of like seamstress stuff, but she also, uh, was a baker. She just like was kind of taking different jobs here and there. Um, and but like when, when I thought of work, I never thought of Nike until I came here for that camp. So that I think changed the trajectory of my entire life, man, because I got exposed to it. And I think that's the one thing I that why I say I'm blessed. A lot of people don't get exposure and know what's really out there. You know, you might find out as you go through your trials and tribulations and turn. 
uh, you know, turn your, your your struggles into success later in life. I was able to be exposed to that so early. You know, I think I was really fortunate about that. So I knew I wanted ever since then. I came back for another camp about a year and a half later and we went again. And I was like, yeah, this is this is where I'm going to be when I when I'm done. So I went I played high school uh, basketball, varsity all four years. Again, loved loved hoop. My goal was to find a college to play at in Oregon so I could be close to campus. That's what I did. I played at Pacific University. It was the first Oregon school that that hit me. So I was like, I looked at the map, was like, that's not too far <laughs> from the campus. Done. We're going there. Uh, and the rest was history, man. I just like kicked down doors until um, I was able to, to maneuver my way in. But that's that's what drew me here. It was really, you know, this this dream job that I had as a kid um, that that brought me up to the Northwest. And so now you're in Portland and you're not just at the swoosh now. Now, now you're, you're following the music passion. You're doing other things. Let's talk about your music profession. What are you doing in that world? What are you doing in that arena? So folks that kind of know what you're up to right now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've been doing music for like 15, 16 years, man. Like since it's just a long, long road of, uh, just passion, man. Like I, um, I studied, I actually minored in music just because I was just like, I, unfortunately, my parents, my parents were always really into music from a, from a sonics standpoint. We listened to it all the time. My dad had the vinyls, spun records all day long, grew up listening to a lot of funk and soul. And, you know, my mom's side, obviously her and her, her, the only person um, I remember <laughs> growing up, like we, we would have mariachi bands and stuff at my grandma's <laughs> like birthday and stuff, you know, and it was like, there was definitely some music there, but I, my parents weren't musically inclined. And so it was interesting <laughs> when I started making music, you know, it was kind of just, I just wanted to learn and figure it out. Um, I had a cousin who put me on to Fruity Loops back in the day. Um, but that was what kind of kicked it off. And I'd say over the past 15, 16 years, um, it's kind of transpired into something that I just, I do because I love it first. Um, I will say that I'm not doing it full time. Obviously, it's 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 not my nine to five. Nike's my nine to five, but I call it as my five to nine. It's something that I love to do um, at the highest level that I possibly can. I don't um, I take the craft very seriously. So when I'm if I'm doing a project, I'm all in and I'm making sure that, you know, that's it's to the standard that you would expect to hear on a radio, expect to see on television, expect to experience and from a concert standpoint, you know, I'm I'm looking at it from every angle to do it at the highest possible level. Um, so I think today I'm kind of in this weird space cause I've, I'm working, my, my day job does take, it's pretty taxing from a time commitment standpoint. So finding the time to actually make music at the level I want to do it and the frequency I'd like to do it is really challenging. Um, but when I do, you know, I'm able, able to finesse that, um, I, I like to go all in and, and deliver something to the whether it's my community the people who listen that's thankful for actually having some dedicated fans that just come back um but i want to make sure you know i'm giving them something that was worth the wait so i'm not gonna i don't put out a lot of music actually i don't i don't you know drop singles every month and you know i'm, I'm like if you're getting something from me it's gonna be well thought through um well packaged you know what i mean so i'm all about creating experiences um I used to be in a band and we played, we gigged all the time. I probably did, gosh, I don't know, like a couple gigs a week. Like we were constantly playing. Um, and I kind of passed that, you know, I'm not really in, in to perform with that kind of frequency anymore. If you're coming to a show, it's because it's going to be a special night and it's something you're going to remember. And if you miss it, you're going to be like, dang, I missed out on my opportunity. Cause I know he's not doing another one anytime soon. So um, that's kind of where I'm at musically now. I'm using it as an art. I'm using it as my, um, my outlet for sure, but it's also part of my brand. And I think it's what makes me very different when it comes to being a person of color in leadership in a major corporation like this. There's not too many people at my level who are rappers with dreadlocks, if you know what I mean. So it, to me, it's like, it's part of me. It's part of my brand. It's how I show up. It's what I do. It's what I am. Hip hop is what I am like to the fullest. So um, I move that way. Uh, I act that way. And it's just, it's just who I am. You know, you've, you've, you've spoken about your wife, you've spoken about your family. Where does this passion for the music and, and, and you spoke about community, where does all this passion come from? Um, you know, the passion from 
I, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think I just like to do everything um, that anytime you're walking in line with something that you love, I feel like you do it to the best of your ability because you're just so, you know, moved by it. You're fulfilled by it. Whether it's my relationship with my wife, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that feels fulfilling. Um, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm going to make music and to make sure that, uh, you know, if I'm showing up for my day job, I'm going to show up and put my best foot forward because I'm passionate about the work that I do. So I think it really just comes from a sense of like, I never want to be in a space that doesn't move me because then I think when you, I think we've all experienced that too. And it's, it is part of the journey. You, you have to do things. Maybe you don't necessarily always want to do immediately. Um, to get to that next spot that that will break open and allow you to do the things you want to do. Um, but if I can move and in in life, every step I take be something that I just love and I'm passionate about, then it's it's gonna be my best work every time. So and one of the things you mentioned earlier too was was your community. And you know, you mentioned mm-hmm. you moved up here from California, but you've really ingrained and kind of engrossed yourself into the Portland community. Why is community so important to you? Uh, I, I honestly, man, I think that community is, is really like, I think the most important part of this is really rooted in like, you can only go as far as your community will hold you up to get to, you know what I mean? Um, there's not a single successful person that doesn't have a village around them. It takes a village, uh, and success is, you know, that's defined in different ways and to each their own. Um, but I do think that no matter what, whether you're striving for something specifically uh whether that be a business or brand or what have you um or even if you're you're introverted and you like to keep to yourself you you're totally content with like being on your own and doing your own thing you still need a community around you um to really allow you to reach that level of um i think happiness to be honest like my community is filled with love. And anytime I put anything out into my community, I know it's coming back tenfold. Uh, so so for, for me personally, um, that's the most important thing from a community standpoint. I, I We all support one another. I know when I do something, I'm going to have the support. I know I have people I can call on. I know I have people who will go out on a limb for me because they fully believe in my brand or who I am or what I do, what I, what I believe in. Um, and you really feel like, you know, nothing can stop you when you have that feeling. Um, so community is everything to me. Um, in fact, we cross paths because of our communities. And I think that's a really special thing. Um, but yeah, it's especially in my profession and in my, in, in music, you know, this is, uh, it, it, I, I'm nothing without, you know, my supporters and my community, my village is they hold me down and, um, I love them for it. Have you ever had a moment of self doubt? Um, definitely. I think everyone has for sure. I think, uh, the moments of self-doubt for me though, have never been, um, usually self-doubt is, um, because you're not confident in something. And I am actually a very confident person. I used to grow up extremely confident. Some people thought I was cocky, but I was just really confident that, you know, I was the better hooper or I was the better rapper or I was the better this. Like I just, cause I practiced the craft and I felt so good at what it was that actually I didn't care if I lost, I knew I was good. You know what I mean? And that was the level of confidence that I moved, did everything in life with, but there's definitely been situations when you get put in a seat or, uh, are asked to do something that maybe is a little uncomfortable. And those are always the moments, um, where you get to, you know, grow i think i think those are if you're not feeling tested and you're not feeling uncomfortable it's hard to grow if if you don't have that experience and so i think the times i've ever felt the self doubt has been when i've been put in a spot to do something that maybe made me uncomfortable or um was just not something i was used to doing but what allowed me to get through that was the proper prep so as long as i was able to prepare for it then i showed up and i was confident and the doubt immediately goes away, whether that's a stage or actually look at like performing and like being in meetings all the time, very similar. Cause if I got to present something to like a external partner, who's this celebrity or this, whoever, and I need to like, 
you know, pitch something to them or work through something with them, you know, that, that could be nerve wracking for a lot of people, but I know I'm prepared. And when I step on that stage, all that self-doubt goes away. Cause once I start talking, it's just like, okay, I, I, I do this. Like I know how to do this. So um, I think we all experience that a little bit, but the preparation I think is, is, is key. You know, you mentioned about preparation, right? Mm-hmm. What, where's John jury in the next year, five years, 10 years? What's, what's the goals? What's your, what's your professional ladder looking like? Um, man, 10 years, uh, hopefully retired early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, if I'll be honest, that'd be the, the, that'd be the real dream, uh, 10 year profession. But, um, to be honest, man, it's been a, it's been quite a journey over the last few years. Cause I've actually maneuvered a little bit and, have taken on i'm currently working through a um a little bit of a transition in terms of the the type of work i'm doing and i think i see myself continuing to challenge myself with new experiences that will allow me to grow and and sharpen um not just my current skill set but just add to my skill set and and be able to do things that maybe i don't have down on paper just yet so what that means is professionally uh you know i might be i've been working in product for a very long time we, we we do apparel um i run i lead an apparel business but you know that might look a little bit more like focusing a little bit more on the marketing side or, or you know a brand side doing something that is still correlated but is a different muscle you know what i'm saying um from a music side which is also still profession cuz you know that's it's uh i i do take that seriously um, that looks like actually I'm, I'm giving you the sneak, uh, insight into this now, but like everyone kind of knows I come with a certain sound and deliver a certain, uh, vibe, I guess, but I'm challenging myself to kind of add to my discography with, with sounds and things that people maybe aren't used to hearing me rap on or produce. Um, and so I'm not going to get too into it just yet, but uh, you'll, you'll definitely see that on the next project. Uh, my last project, Dope Dealer, which is my definitely my best body of work. And I think the fan favorite, it's just a no brainer that there was a lot of a lot of good stuff on that. But I want I want the evolution to be completely different. I don't want to sound like that. You know what I mean? And if we're not growing and moving forward, then, you know, we're not. This is and again, to each their own. I feel like if I'm not growing and moving forward, then I'm 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 not achieving what I you know, no, I can. And, and that's the one thing is I just want to grow. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to look back and, and see that every year I grew every year, I did something new and added in a positive way to, to who I am and what I do and what I offer. So I would say um, in five years, I hope I have some projects that just sound crazy that, that, you know, change the trajectory of my music. And I also hope that I have taken on some new challenges from a, nine to five standpoint that, you know, I pushed me into a space I never thought that I would be in. Uh, and then another five years we're retired. So we're good right after that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. But actually, you know, one thing I will add um, my, so my wife runs a, a business um, it's a health life coaching business. And I do um, see that in, you know, in 10 years from now, I hope that I'm taking a bigger stake in working in that versus the nine to five Um, Or at least, you know, music, doing music full time um, while supporting that, I think would be the the real dream job, because I feel like I've been able to check the box. You know, I I came out here as a kid. (coughs) Excuse me. I came out here as a kid and did the Nike thing. So I think the natural evolution is is that to me. Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. You know, and they they kind of, you know, uh, they kind of say, uh. Oh, what's that damn saying now? I just got it stuck in my head. But before I get further than that, go ahead and give your wife's business a plug. Uh, I want to hear kind of just to give a quick uh, listeners a synopsis of so they might be interested in what is the wife's business, how they might learn more about it. Yeah, thanks for asking, actually, man. The, the So the business is really, um, it's called Whole Human. Uh, it is a, it's a, so number one, she was an educator for over a decade. And I think, um, in addition to that, she's she's been on this like health journey um, and life journey for that whole time where she's run, gosh, just like 
13 marathons and like 20 plus half marathons and like all these like she's done spartan races and like place top and almost died i did a i did a 5k <laughs> and i i did die i actually came back to life after me um but she's top five in spartan races top five in bodybuilding competitions like people don't do that and um it, it takes a very specific set of nutrition or routines or strategies to be able to do those successfully but at the same time of doing all of that um you know we're we're kind of known as like the couple that parties and the couple that has a good time we travel we eat good we we love a good cocktail we we love wine tasting you know we're we're, we're traveling somewhere and we want to go get on a booze cruise and we're just like cruising down the caribbean like you know but still living the lifestyle living the lifestyle we want but still having the whether it's health goals or uh life goals still being able to do that so her whole thing with the whole human is it's, it's kind of like in teaching they call it a wraparound service where you have a kid but you have services for other needs that they have that's the approach of whole human it's really being able to serve a client in the ways they need to be served so she's literally like yo you might have came here because you wanted to lose weight but you're actually your whole life's going to change because we're going to focus on your relationship with your family and in addition to your relationship with food in addition to your relationship with work in addition to all of these things and it's been so cool man to see uh the transformation that people have it's truly life-changing so it is life coaching um and it is definitely uh an experience that I don't think any other service is providing out there. So to us, this is an unlock. It's a huge thing. And uh whole humans definitely that's, that's, that's where you need to go. If you need any health and life related goals uh, to achieve shout out uh, wifey it's at it's Kayla jury on Instagram. Um, we just started a podcast actually called the whole human podcast. That is just um, in- incredible. So um Shout out to her. That's that's uh hopefully in ten years my you know my new boss. Nice. And, you know, <laughs> they, they always they always say you know the first thirty years of our life we're building our resume and the last thirty years of our life we're building our legacy. It sounds one hundred percent. That's what you're trying to focus on. And you know I think with the competitive nature, uh you know the general rule is if we're not getting comparatively better, we're getting competitively worse. So like to your point, you know always can constantly constantly be learning. So how do you you know market yourself, Jay Jury? If if you're you know, either coming out with a new product or coming out with a new song. How do you market yourself? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, the word market or marketing is it's multifaceted, right? You got to, you got to definitely take advantage of all of the different tools and resources and ways to get your brand or your, uh, who you are out there. <clears throat> um, for, for me, it's pretty simple. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm actually not in the, currently in the financial position to where I want to throw a bunch of money from a marketing standpoint. I think there's a much smarter way at some point as a business, it, you need to do that. Um, but there are also, I think there are times when people maybe do it too soon or not with the right products or not with the right angle. Um, and so where I always start is where's my low hanging fruit in terms of uh, my brand who do I connect with making sure that I'm connecting that dot, right? As long as my, my, whether it's my fan base or my, um, the, the, the community or whoever my target is, I'm doing, uh, my, I, I'm going to market this in a way that will attract them. So for example, I know if I want to, if I want the whole city of Portland to know about, an upcoming project that I have, then I know who I need to talk to in terms of getting the word out. I have tapped in. I mean, the face-to-face stuff goes such a long way because you tap in with your fellow DJs, your fellow other artists, other people in, in the streets. You, that's like your guerrilla crew that helps with that. Word of mouth is literally the number one lowest hanging fruit that anybody, any business can have. It doesn't matter how good your posts are, your promo, whatever. If you don't have people talking about you to other people, then you're not going to get that far. Um, so I always start there. It's like, how do I, how do I kind of create this spider web effect, if you will, uh, uh, of word of mouth? Um, but in addition to 
um, you know, using tools like social media that that's really easy. I think that's the the other lowest hanging fruit that I think all of us have access to and can use. Uh, and when used in the right way, you can definitely, um, you know, reach people you didn't think you ever would. So I always start with those two because those are the easiest ones. Um, and then, you know, from there, it just really depends on the project. Again, you know, if you're going to, you know, really lean into ads and mark, you market through advertisements, that's another obviously one you you should do. But again, low, start, start lowest hanging fruit. We don't all have big budgets, um, you know, especially independent artists and people who are just starting out. Take advantage of your community. Take advantage of the the people around you who are supporting you. I mean, you literally, we probably all have someone in our phone who is willing to sh- share whatever you have coming up with their entire contact list, and you didn't even know, because you never asked. Very, very true. You know, Nipsey Hussle you know I mean? said, uh, um, you know, the the person that actually uh, is probably going to root for you the most is somebody you never met. You know, so a hundred percent. Remember that. Yeah. Now, one of the things, you know, what, what's some advice you would have for some of these listeners at home, either in the product world or in the music world that are trying to come up? Um, hmm. I think there's, I mean, there's a, there's, there's quite a few gems I've kind of picked up over the years, man. But the thing that resonates with me, at least in this moment, the most is just be authentic, be as authentic to yourself as possible. I think we all owe that to ourselves. If you step into a place that doesn't feel is right for you, we all have that gut instinct. You got to listen to that. We all have that intuition. And, and I know that anytime I have stepped foot in a place where I was confident, I felt, I knew this is where I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. My best work came from that. We talked about that a little bit earlier, right? The things I loved or the things I'm passionate about. That was my best work. And it's really hard to put forth your best work in a space that you feel is maybe sucking the life out of you, right? Or, or you feel like you're going through the motions. Going through the motions got nobody to the highest level. You know what I mean? So number one, be very authentic with yourself, but then show up authentically. You know, your brand, um, you know, people always say it's, it's a, uh, it's all about who, you know, and though that might be true, I would say it's more important who knows you and who knows you and your brand and what you represent and how you show up is what really goes a long way, especially in the corporate world. If you have leaders that believe in you and they're well-respected leaders and they, they're vouching for you, then, you know, that that's the position you want to be in. If you're in any industry, me music wise, you know, if there are there are well-respected people out there who may drop my name and all of a sudden I have a contact hitting me that I never thought would, but they just trusted that person because they spoke highly of the brand and what I represented. So stay authentic, you know, don't deviate, don't um, don't allow anyone to put you in a box that you feel isn't you because you're not going to put forth your best work. You're not going to be truest to yourself. And let's be honest, we're all. I mean, the, the purpose of life, in my opinion, is to be happy, is to do things that make you happy. We've all got the thing that when you do it, like all the stress leaves, all the everything is just out the window and you are just fulfilled and you are happy. We should be striving to do that in every way possible. And it is really, really difficult to do that. I'm, I'm definitely not going to say that that's not hard. We all know that life has its things, the, the hurdles we got to go through, but if you're staying authentic to yourself and you're moving in that it, with, with that in mind, I mean, the world's our oyster and like you really can accomplish so much more when you're when you're focused on that versus the money or uh, doing something because someone said that's what you need to do. You know what I mean? Like, I think we get a little caught up on a formula to life. There's not a formula like how I got to my seat is different from other people who are in similar seats. Right. And same for you. I'm sure how how you got to your seat is very different from your your co whether it be co uh your colleagues your friends family whoever we all have a different journey and and that in itself is a a really really cool thing and neat thing to learn from each other's experiences but your journey is your journey and don't compare yourself to others stay authentic stay in what you know is in your heart and you'll never go wrong yeah you know and I, folks listen i hope there's a there's a few nuggets that i want to pull out real quick and one is you know, John's really kind of talking about the ex- traveling and the experience he gained from traveling and gaining from other experiences. 
having moments of, of um, uncertainty. Tr- truthfully, go to a different country. You're going to learn so much quicker going to a different country because, one, you don't know the language. You don't know much. You're going to learn pretty quickly, though, where that bathroom is and where to get something to eat, right, when you kind of go to those locations. And I think what John was also kind of talking about is, like, your zone of genius, right? Um, exactly. You, you, you don't want to get stuck into your zone of competence where you certainly you can do it, but you don't feel any fulfillment doing it, you know, try to find that zone of genius, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you, and it's kind of like, you know, the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, expecting a different result. Right. That's, that's a true definition of insanity. So, so don't, yes. <laughs> so don't, so don't basically, you know, run yourself insane by trying to do something, the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Get out, experience some new things, try different things. You know, one thing I've been talking about recently is, um, you know, my, my dad, you know, always says, you know, if you're going to be a digger, it will be the best digger possible. No, if I'm going to be a digger, why don't you teach me how to use an excavator so I can do this a lot faster, right? There you go. You know, try to think a little mm-hmm. bit innovatively. Now, John, for the listeners at home that might be interested to learn more about you, that might be wanting to listen to your music, want to connect with you, how do they connect with you? Website, social media, how can they get a hold of you? Honestly, the easiest way is definitely IG. It's the easiest. Um, you can find me at, at j underscore j u r y or you could just type in j j x j u r y j jury um everyone calls me jury you can hit me and just say you are you you found out through this uh you know this interview but um yeah and that's that's the way that it, which is crazy i meet people out and about traveling the world and i don't even give my phone number out i just give them you know give them the gram and that's like it's just really it's a beautiful thing that we all kind of have at our disposal to connect with people and build relationships. And then, you know, I've seen, I've seen businesses, so many businesses built off the strength of, you know, just that. So hit me up there. Uh, My music's on all streaming platforms, J X J U R Y again. Um, But yeah, that that's me. Thank you so much for having me, man. I really, I really feel honored and appreciative for the, for the, conversation no but now are there any any like events coming up that you want to throw out there to make us aware of that might be coming up uh yeah actually so i i'm working on a pretty big one for this summer um i am wow that you're gonna be the first to hear this i love it yeah so i'm actually working on um a music festival that i would love to throw this summer um so details to come but just know that J jury has got something major for the city this summer, working on it with a lot of great talent. Um, and we're just going to have a full day of just quality music, uh, incredible vendors and just a night to remember. So I, I think we just don't do these sorts of things enough here, uh, especially with the talent um, that I'm planning to bring to this in terms of who's in our backyard here in Portland and who who heavily, again, this is for my community. This is for the people who I want to expose to my community. So it'll really be like all my homies, all the people I definitely rock with who I think do the craft and take it as seriously as I do. Um, But also show love because at the end of the day, um, you know, I I can see talent all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to be associated with, with that brand or that, you know, person or their community but i see a lot of people doing some amazing things pulling community together and doing like uh just doing numbers for the city and i think it's a really really dope thing that i'd love to bring you know all of their communities into one spot because we all kind of have some similar um red threads and i think the number one thing would be love so uh gonna be a really really fire summer i will for sure keep you posted um see if there's ways we can partner and and just be part of it because it's going to be a beautiful day uh and yeah man that's that's the biggest thing i'm working on a project too and planning to have the project come out before that so new music new shows it's going to be uh it's going to be a really, really good year. Oh, baby. And you've heard it here first on the Shades of Entrepreneurship, folks. Uh, in fact, this information will be on the newsletter, which is a perfect time to shamelessly plug the website, theshadesofe.com. Please visit it. And you can subscribe to the newsletter at theshadesofe.com. You can also follow me on the social sites at the Shades of E on the Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave the listeners with? Uh, man, yo, just shout out to Shades of E, shout out to Gabriel, man. You're, you're doing things for the community. And these are the type of, uh, these are the things that I think go 
uh, they they just don't go seen enough. And so as somebody, if you're listening to this because I brought you here and you're, you're a fan of me, um, I'd like to introduce you, my community, to Shades of E. Uh, because what you're doing is really, really special and, and it's a, it's appreciated. And uh, I love how you move. I think the minute we met, we clicked and I just like knew you were in service of community and uh, just, just filled and moving with love as well. So uh, thank you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. And uh, shout out you. Man, Jerry, it is an honor. Thank you so much. And please uh, let me know about this news uh, music festival as it comes in. If you need a, sure. if you need an MC, let me know. I got the mic. I'll be out there on the stage, ready to go, baby. So the folks again, listen at home. Please subscribe to the Shades of E dot com newsletter, and you can also follow us on this uh, social sites: Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Nope, not Twitter. TikTok and Facebook. Thank you, and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.